Uh, let's see, I'll put these on, I guess. Okay, yeah, action. Uh, this is, hello, this is Kelcat the Kelcatster, and uh, you're watching... Yeah, uh, this is a review of Toy Story 4. Um, t ah, yeah, uh, I've, of course, seen the other three several times. Um, the, uh, I don't own them, though, which is odd. Do you think I would? Um... Yeah, they were, they were they were too expensive, don't. But the Toy Story is a Disney Pixar series going back to the '90s, which kind of effectively launched all the Pixar theories out there. Um, yeah, so t Toy Story Four uh, circum subverts them. <laughs> this doesn't really mention them actually. Um, um, it does have an RV in it. I will say that there is an RV in it, and it looks vaguely like the one from Bugs Life, but it's not. So they can they could go after that, but everything else, the characters, equations, the people in it, not really, unless somehow the old lady that has the antique shop is a descendant of the witch, like they suggested that the girl time traveler in Monsters Inc., which is not a time traveler, it's not wormholes, they act a little like wormholes, but they're not, they're dimensional doorways. So the Pixar verse is actually just different facets of the same dimension. It's not, it's a multiverse. It's not that it's, uh, there are different timelines. Uh, so the, the humans don't begat Wally, begat cars. It's more like in one universe, Wally exists, in one universe, cars exist, in one universe, Toy Story exists, one universe, Monsters Inc. seems to exist, uh, with, uh, the, then the university one threw it off. So yeah, the theory is a little weird. But, um, in this one, it's the first one featuring. Since uh, since the toys were all all taken in by Bonnie, who was going into kindergarten, uh, the, in the story, the uh, basic premise, the plot is that they go on a road trip and and uh, no spoilers. I'll try not to spoil anything. This is a non-spoiler review of uh, the. It just came out, so yeah. Um, this, uh, the uh, they go on a road trip and Woody becomes lost and finds Bo Peep in the, uh, the character that was just a throwaway gag lost character from part three. I said, oh, she's lost. Uh, yeah, so they established early on that nine years prior to this story, uh, that was when she was lost. Um, prior to this story, not the other one, which is throws the timeline a little for a loop. Um, the, uh, <laughs> so it would have been, that, that, that does set... Toy Story 3, roughly three years ago, I guess, two years ago, because she would have been in preschool, yeah, a year, a year and a half ago, so, uh, yeah, Toy Story 3, a year and a half before, uh, yeah, if you want to work that out, <laughs> uh, 2 was in 2010, and, uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, and, uh, the earlier one was in 1994, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the timeline really doesn't, Patch too well, um, yeah. But in this story, we have Bonnie, who has two parents. They only bicker when bad things happen, so that's that's good. So it's it breaks the uh, continuity of, of Disney movies with two parents that aren't together. Uh, it's more like uh, uh, this is more like the Incredibles continuity, but it's not related to the Incredibles. Um, yeah, and there's a Molly. There's a, there, there is a mention of a Molly in it. That was Bo Peep's original kid. Uh, it might be connected to Monsters Inc. Or they just threw out that as a gag. Uh, we don't see her, but they mention it. Uh, we do, we don't see a lot of the stuff they mention actually in this movie. They wanted to avoid making it connected. I understand that the script went through several rewrites and directors, so that might have been <laughs> what happened. It got lost in the shuffle. Uh, yeah. Um, so, they go to the road trip, uh, originally Buzz Light, uh, no, Woody, Woody and Forky, what happens is Forky gets created in her first day of kindergarten orientation. She creates Forky out of some stuff that was in the trash. Uh, so, she's the future designer of the cars and cars, but she's just a little kid now. That, that, yeah, that's actually connected later on when the van gets possessed by the toys. Um, yeah, <laughs> which is out of Finding Nemo. They basically ripped off a gag from their own movie, so 
Yeah, um, and a little bit of Secret Life of Pets, which is Illumination, did the same thing the same year. Car gets taken over by animals or toys or, uh, or other objects. There's a scene with a car getting taken over. I won't say when, but it's kind of like Finding Dory. Um, <laughs> kind of. That gives away a little bit. Um, he goes to, uh, Woody goes in search of Forky and ends up in an antique shop where he encounters uh, essentially a Chucky doll or an Annabelle doll, or, uh, but in this case it's more of the, uh, or the Chatty Cathy doll from the, from the, she would have been like, this would have been like a precursor to her, Chatty Cathy and, was it, and, and Pamela were done around the same time in the 80s, she would have been a 50s version of that, which kind of doesn't work, but okay, fine, um, literally she doesn't work, her thing is malfunctioning, her motivation as a villain or anti-hero, I would say she's an antagonist, not a villain, uh, her motivation is to get a hold of Woody's uh, voice box. That would somehow work. Like that, yeah. So she knows of him and where he's made. So it, like, it tends to change what happened in the collector story in Part Two because Toy Story Two. They imply that he's not the only one. There were other Woodies, and she recognizes him. So clearly, if she did did recognize him, then. He isn't the only Woody action figure. He's there. There were others. Uh, that collector guy was wrong, so that throws away some throws some of the other six R theories out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and the the Andy's dad thing that they were going on about that that doesn't even it doesn't even address the Andy character really. Um, he's gone off to college. Forky, the idea that a kid can assemble a toy out of like a toy fork, like a craft class thing, and that becomes sentient, uh, is addressed in the movie. I won't give that away either, because uh, it's it's funny how they explain that. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, the uh, the fork thing, spork thing, becomes a, a living thing, just you know, just because. Um, <laughs> Does that mean that other things in that universe end up a living thing? I don't know. Um, the uh, the whole yeah. The, how does that work? Is there are the inanimate objects and toys in the past, and they have these uh, commando guys in it that are clearly GI Joes. So why couldn't they get some kind of permission from Hasbro to say they're GI Joes? Because GI Joe was around before Hasbro. Technically, they could have said. You know, uh, we can use the. They got permission from Mattel for Barbie. Why don't they just say, okay, we'll call them G.I. Joe. They don't really do anything in the movie. It's just like, ooh, G.I. Joe shows up. It's like, why don't I just call them that? That, that was the only objection. Like, call them G.I. Joes. What's the problem? <laughs> and where are the Transformers? That's what I'm going to know. They'd be everywhere. There'd be like Transformers like running roughshod all over the place. <laughs> Some of them with battery powered working stuff. Like Trypticon would be like, beep, 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 beep. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Woody, the, the yeah, Woody and Cowgirl Jesse, and now, now, what about the Disney characters that have been reproduced as the result of the Toy Story line? Do they become sentient? All of them? Like they implied that in part two that there were other Buzz Lightyear's, so shouldn't he automatically make them sentient as well? And they be running around? Also, launching him off of the tilt world would would destroy him. Yes, Buzz Lightyear would. He wasn't destroyed. He was fine. But, but yeah, he would fly through the air and break into probably two or three pieces. Yes, uh, they do address one character that gets broken. I won't give that away either. Um, <laughs> but it's not him. It's someone else. Um, they they indicate the sheep were girls. The the three headed sheep mutant that was the product of sheep inbreeding. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yes, and the Pixar the Pixar thing is is weird because like, yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, they have to they have to figure out the antagonist to step two. The other, the uh, the family begins to leave, so they have to figure out how to make it so they stay long enough to find the various things. Go back to the antique shop and do what not to rescue them. Uh, yeah, Buzz goes out to try and rescue Woody. And meets up with him and finds out he's found Bo Peep and there's a reunion and then there's these two wacky sort of the uh, 
the vaguely offensive um, uh, little plush toys, they're trying not to make them sound like the two robot step and fetch it robots from Transformers, but they are. <laughs> so basically, they're running around going, Yeah, he's so the child talking little parrot. And it's like, uh, No. <laughs> You're really annoying. <laughs> but yeah, uh, don't do that. Uh, but yeah, uh, there were there were some funny gags. There was a a Canadian evil Knievel toy that does little tricks and things. I used to have something like that. It was an evil Knievel toy. Uh, it broke, uh, <laughs> uh, but it wasn't Canadian. It was an evil Knievel. It was that's what it was. They they couldn't say that, so they called him do uh, uh, like. Duke Kaboom. They didn't want to call him Duke Nukem because that's from uh, from the video games. They didn't want to call him that. But unrelated, but an unrelated video game. Yeah, I don't know. what They, they couldn't use Evil Knievel for some reason. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so all of the Transformers, if the Toy Story universe worked, all of the Transformers that are on the shelves in here come to life and rock around in the house and the room and everything. <laughs> Which would be really cool and messed up. What is this? What is that? So anyway, uh, yeah, Toy Story. Yeah, so the toys would go around the room. And anyway, the... Yeah, I don't want to give away too much of the movie because they, the textures are really good. The background's really good. There's... there's a, a Don Rickles passed away during the making of it as well as Adam Brody, or the guy that did some of the animation on it. He, I think it's his name, Brodine. Uh, same age as me, but uh, he died. He was only 48. I don't know what happened. Anyway... <laughs> But I did not. I'm not. <laughs> it was someone else. I did not work on Pixar. Although I did know some people that did work on Pixar. They were there. I knew of them. I didn't know them. They lived across the street. Back in the days of Evergreen. And then San Jose State. And in the 90s, they were designing a little known movie called A Bug's Life. They had stuff with the bugs. They had drawings and stuff. Yeah. And there was this movie about bugs and ants and things. Yeah. It's going to be cool. Okay. <laughs> and then ants came out and they're all, it's not that, it's the other one. <laughs> it's the Bugs Life one. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's the Bugs Life one. But yeah, they, they, were, they also went to San Jose State at one point and there was a, a panel thing. And I think they were kind of kidding Lassiter and those guys and Dr. and more of the other ones that were there. I think they were kind of joking around when they suggested the Andy's father thing because they were just being like sarcastic because there was because it's probably not true but what they said happened to Andy's father is that he died of AIDS. They said immune deficiency, he got HIV, he died. And they were just just to be different, just to make everybody go, <gasps> "What?" And then and then the, later on they said, "Oh no, no, no we're just kidding." And no, no. Something else, it was cancer. No. Cuz you know like in in or something else. Actually, we didn't think about it. And then the other guy said, no, no, it was a divorce. So they were like, three or four of them were like, they didn't know. They just made it up. They figured, you know, in the, in the 80s, in the 80s and 90s, there were like Oscar movies that were either about AIDS or cancer, AIDS or cancer, AIDS or cancer, or some other <laughs> or mental illness, and then AIDS and cancer again. You know, there were all these movies out about that to get an Oscar. And I think that's what they were doing when they said that, just to be kind of messed up about Toy Story. Um, but yeah, they were just being messed up. They are like, no, it's the theory of the... It's just no... Husband's just not there because we didn't want to animate him. Oh, that was the real reason. Lasseter's, <laughs> Lasseter's real reason. We just didn't want to animate that. But yeah. We didn't want to make it be about the parents bickering. We wanted to make it about the kids. That's what he said. But, but who knows? Lasseter could have been kidding there too. Um, but, but that was way back in the day. Maybe he changed his mind later. After, after all, a lot of Pixar movies didn't get produced, like Newt, for instance, which was uh, supplanted by Rio, which came out. It's very similar. And they're like, oh, we can't do that. I'm going to have another Ants and Bugs Life thing going on. But yeah, um, so we never do learn anything about Andy at this point. 
anymore in this movie. So that's something you can look forward to. Uh, uh, and yeah, they were probably messing around. To a college audience, they were probably just like, ha, ha, ha you guys, uh, we got you. Yeah, I'm sure it was not true, the HIV. That'd be messed up. That'd be really dark. <laughs> just turn for the Toy Story. It's really dark. <laughs> well, actually, this movie was kind of dark, and they, they had these, like, howdy doody dummies walking around. Or the girls, the, the girl dolls, butler. Um, the butler dolls, yeah. He was, yeah, and Woody got stepped on a couple of times. It would have broken him, but okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Does beg the question, yes, with Disney having produced all of these toys and merchandise for these movies, do they come alive as well? I do have some Buzz Lightyears, some smaller ones. And one of my nephews has the full Buzz Lightyear that talks. She gave to my great nephew because he didn't want it anymore. <laughs> I don't know what he did to it, but it was the one in the box with the Buzz Lightyear ship. So yeah, <laughs> I think it was from part two. It was a Toy Story two with that toy. <laughs> but yeah. Um, that yeah, I think the great nephew at that point was two or three, so it was like, kind of, you know, what's he gonna do with it? Till he gets a little older. Now, now he can appreciate his age, but uh, when he was three, you know, he could appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, but the uh, yeah, it was. It, so was it any good? Yeah, I should probably just get around to that. Uh, was it any good? I'm talking about Pixar theory. Well, far, why not? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was fine. Um, some critics said it was not necessary, but not unnecessary. One critic said, uh, uh, "I don't think it was that not necessary." I think it was just like, okay, it's a different timeline thing. I would have, if I was going to do it, I would have done just another place somewhere else with different characters, like that happened to encounter them. Because that would be more interesting. But no, all right. So they they went with the ones they were familiar with. Be like having a reunion. Uh, that was fine. But uh, yeah, of course, Don Rickles' character they they couldn't really have him say much of anything. It's like two lines because he died. But uh, but it but yeah the the um but uh, not not during the filming of the movie. But he, <laughs> yeah, the movie didn't kill him. Um, he's a voice actor. And, uh, but, but yeah, the, um, it was a long time ago since the Pixar people, so yeah, I don't know them now, it, it was like late 97, the last time I heard of them, so, long time ago, for 20 years, yeah, since the, uh, <laughs> those particular people, uh, oh, you don't know them now, I didn't count, ah, oh. I knew of them, I didn't know them personally, <laughs> but yeah, uh, <coughs> Yeah, not, not hanging out with uh, the producers either. Just, had I known them, uh, Mar uh, Mark's cars would have gotten a job at Pixar. But no, so he didn't, clearly. Um, uh, but we did crash the party at their Halloween party at their house in 94 or 95, somewhere in there. 94. Four bugs. Um, yeah, um, that was funny. We saw the Bugs Life drawings on the wall. Yeah. Someone drew a dick on one of them, of course. Well, I was a little inebriated from beer. I also drew the a Sharpie pen. I drew an Enterprise and a LaForge visor. <laughs> you guys could leave now. <laughs> oh, well. Um, it's a leg. It's not a dick. It's his leg. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> It was a whiteboard they could erase later. It was one of the dry erase boards. And it didn't have any notes that were important. It just had, like, goofy shit people were drawing on it. So it wasn't like, it's the only one. <laughs> Somebody previously had drawn a naked lady. It's like, <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, a dry erase board. The guests could draw their initials on it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, um see the uh, well but anyway I had nothing to do with the Toy Story movies didn't produce or make them or anything of course um uh, yeah part four was um 
It was fine. Uh, uh, this is the third time I've gone into a movie where the seating arrangement was messed up and other people were sitting in the wrong chair, the, well, my chair, but uh, they could we could have just stayed where we were. I didn't really have to bother them, but, but they, they moved over. Um, but, but yeah, um, so it was starting. Yeah, it was, it was, it's fine. It's a little, uh, it's not nearly as much fun, I thought, as the, as the other two. It was more serious in tone in terms of how they were lost or found or whatnot. Uh, there were a couple of moments where it was almost a weepy moment, but not quite. Uh, there was, there was, um. It's not like Coco or Up, where you're like, oh god, oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like Toy Story 3, where at the end you're like, <gasps> It wasn't like that movie. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was nicer to the audience than Toy Story 3. But yeah, there's, there's been a few hints that this movie was coming, because there were a couple of other episodes where Woody was kind of on his own with other characters doing things. Which was a hint, I guess. And, and then the other characters were there in other shorts. So, yeah, they were just randomly putting them here and there. So we knew something like this adventure was going to happen. For If you watch the shorts from the other two movies. Uh, and, and the meet-up with the two uh, annoying characters talking jive. Uh, yeah. Um, that <laughs> what do you think? Snowy, what do you think? They were thinking Angry Birds, but Talking Jive. That's what they were thinking. And you don't want to emulate Angry Birds. That, that movie is, yeah, even if it made money, don't it. Don't. It's not like Pixar has done wholly original movies, but sometimes they haven't. Even Coco, the beloved magical adventure of Dios de las Muertas, is about the same universe as Book of Life, from two years earlier, and it had uh, Zoe Zendahara in it, and <laughs> it's the same. Well, they go to the same afterlife, but it's a different movie. I think it was a was it Illumination that did that, or was it DreamWorks? It might have been DreamWorks. So yeah, they were inspired by the DreamWorks movie when they did Coco, but that's okay because they did it different enough. It was there wasn't a musician guy that was like a like a Don Juan type of. Elvis guy, there wasn't that. Ew, and then, but I will comment on Coco in that day. one of the Pixar theories was that that the uh, that the, that the reason the the Don Juan Elvis guy just assumed that the little boy was his son Miguel, I think his name is, uh, was that or Miguel, yeah, was that was that he had groupies and he just didn't know which groupie it was that he was with. Uh, I would say yes and no on that. I would say uh, probably a 60-40 on that. Yeah, yeah, he probably didn't know officially who the kid was. Um, but, <laughs> but then toward the end, he figured it out, and he was like, oh, it's, you're the son of the guy that, uh, the poison guy. But he think back um, in that movie, the poison guy, that he, had, uh, that he took his lyrics from. I think he probably kind of knew because he's like a ghost and he has like afterlife thoughts. And he knows what the other life is like and all that. So yeah, I, I think he knew. But he but he didn't know if it was his or not. So that's entirely possible. The, the, the singer guy in the movie. <laughs> yeah, he could have thought he was a groupie at first. Groupie's kid at first. <laughs> but yeah, um, but in this movie, you're not really sure how Bo Peep got out there or old universe. Maybe the trailer is connected to the one in the book. Maybe not. Maybe it's a completely different trailer. Uh, I think it kind of is completely different. But they sort of sometimes they retcon these movies during the movies. Like like it, like they change directors during A, uh, a Good Dinosaur and uh, put Pete Doctor in that one scene with the, with the uh, Triceratops. <laughs> uh, but, but he was the director of the, the, other, the other half. Uh, and yeah, there were parts of that movie that were kind of a mess, but I still liked it. Uh, but this one, this one was not a mess so much. Uh, I liked it. It was, it was fine. I don't know if it's ninety percent. Uh, it was almost a hundred percent. That'd be eighty, eighty-five, eighty-six, maybe. 
You know, it's not, it's not 100. percent It's one of the better movies of this year, but it, it's fine. It's, it's not bad. I liked it. Um, so that would be three and a half stars. Went like four or five stars. It wasn't. It wasn't four stars. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't awesome. Uh, that that's uh, it was it was fine. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, the, the the visuals and the texturing and the the, the building, like in a good dinosaur, how everything looked photorealistic. It looks like the antique the antique shop stuff looks like you're actually there. It's like not even. I wonder if they filmed a lot of this in an antique shop and at a carnival, and just like superimposed the toys onto. You know the the photorealistic backgrounds like they did in Dinosaur, but it is considerably improved since the Good Dinosaur. So it looks like the cityscape that they did in uh, Coco was also amazing, and, and the afterlife thing was of course fantasy that part, but the realistic town was realistic. But yeah, so uh, so yeah, they've improved since Coco, which is pretty impressive. Uh, pretty soon that they, they, they'll have like <laughs> it'll be like wow the photorealistic like people and stuff of course that'll be uncanny then they have to make them not quite uncanny and I would say the uh, the chatty Kathy <laughs> Gabby <laughs> Gabby Gabby thing was uh, pretty much uh, uncanny <laughs> uh, they called her Gabby Gabby in the movie but she's, it's chatty Kathy it's an early version of her like her, her ancestor, her, her product line linear ancestor. Ooh, another, another, yeah, Pixar there. Or not, yeah, so I thought, yeah, I thought they were going to do something with the, the mentioning, name dropping Molly in there, but they didn't. Maybe they were just referring to the drug. I don't know. Anyway, this has been a review of, no, <laughs> there's just been a review of, uh, of uh, Toy Story 4. Uh, the next generation or whatever <laughs> yeah um because it's a different it's a different kid yeah anyways <laughs>